Jared with Yellow Van Handyman here today and today I am going to show you how to repair a Gibson Frigidaire front loader type washing machine that's having rear bearing problems. And here's the key. Industry wide there is not uh, replacement parts available for this other than replacing the whole rear half of the tank. So I'm going to show you how you can take a $200 plus dollar repair and make it a $50 or less repair. Let's go. set to go. The first thing we want to do is we want to get the washing machine out. Before we can do that, we got to get all this laundry out of the way. So we're going to get that out of the way. We're going to pull the we're going to pull the washing machine out and we're going to take it out to the garage so that we can work on it where we have a little bit more space. Okay, so we're in the garage now. We got the machine out. And the first thing I want to do is show you how to get into it. It's really simple. Okay, so here's how you get into these machines. They're really quite simple. Uh, you want to start with the top. Okay, the way you do that is there's a couple of brackets back here on the back. It's these two brackets right here, and there's going to be four screws that you're going to pull out of those. And then you're simply going to push the top forward like that, and then lift it off. Now there'll be a ground strap that you have to remove as well, but these, these brackets stay on there. So we'll set that aside. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take off a few screws around the back panel, and we're going to go ahead and remove the back panel so that that's out of our way. Okay, so I just want to take the intimidation factor off of working on these appliances. And so this one, obviously, I've, I've taken some of it apart already, uh, but only for the sense of making it easier for you to see. So now we're going to move around front. Okay, you're going to remove two screws on this bottom panel, which are, which are located right down here. And then the pa panel is just going to drop off and, and come off to the side. Notice that you don't have to remove the door. Okay, there's a rubber gasket that, that uh, attaches to the tank that's in here. So now we're going to move around to the back side and I'll show you how to get the tank out. There's a couple things that you want to look at when you're, when you're removing the tank. Um, it's essentially held in by two things. There's springs at the top that hold it, these springs right here, and then there's these shock mounts at the bottom. And these shock mounts attach to the, the, the main tank itself. So for, to make this easier, I took just a couple of screws out and I removed the, the motor and I loosened up a couple of uh, hose clamps here to be able to disconnect the, the uh, drain connection to the tank. Other than that, uh, it's just a matter of disconnecting these shock mounts and disconnecting the springs. Now one of the tricks that I do is I take something, this is a little go-kart wheel, and I put it underneath the tank when I'm unbolting it because I don't want the tank to come down and crush the drain mechanism or anything else or damage the tank itself. So just a little trick, if you have a couple blocks of wood or something, stick those down there because the main tank is pretty heavy because it has a bunch of counterbalance in it. Okay, so that's enough of that. It's really pretty simple to get it out. Once you get the main tank out, essentially what you're going to be looking at is an assembly like this. Okay, this is the main tank assembly and this right here is uh, the bladder connection for the front door. The thing that we need to do with the main tank assembly is we need to separate it in half. And it's uh, relatively easy to do that. I think there's about 12 or 16 bolts around the side of it that look just like this. So for, for what I do is I use an air uh, wrench in order to loosen these and it works pretty easily and this wobbly on here will allow you to get to some of these bolts that are more difficult. Uh, if you just have a hand wrench then uh, it's just going to take a few minutes of wrenching but you want to pull all these bolts out. Okay, once you get all the bolts out around the outside of it, the tank assembly is basically just going to come, a come apart in two halves. Okay, so I'm going to remove the, the, the front half of the tank assembly, which is pretty heavy because this is all counterweights. So this is basically all concrete. So just grab a hold of it and lift up and pull it off. Make sure you've got a place to set it off to the side. Okay. Now you'll notice I have this sitting on a, on a stand 
because the, the back shaft actually sticks out. And if you look at that, you'll see that I've already removed the main shaft bolt and the, the drive pulley. And so this actually, this mounts on here just like that with this bolt in it. So you just want to remove that bolt, remove the pulley off, and this is the, this is the main shaft and actually one of the bearings that we're going to be replacing, this bearing right here. So in order to get this out, you can, it, it, if, you, if you lift up on it this way and it pulls out, that's fine. If you have troubles getting it out, just turn it over, set a block of wood on here, and then pound on this shaft because that shaft needs to come out, but you don't want to damage the shaft by pounding on it. You would just take and put a block of wood here and you would pound on this until it, until it came loose and, and popped out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and it slides right out. Now this is the shaft and, the, and this is the seal right here uh, or the seal area that actually is causing all the problems. That's where the whining and the growling is coming from. So we're going to set this aside. The, the problem with this particular repair is that the only way to repair these bearings is to buy this entire assembly which costs about $200 plus shipping and then there's possibly some other things that you have to uh, replace during that repair which is why this repair is so costly and in many cases cost prohibitive because it just costs too much to repair a washing machine that simply isn't worth it which is the reason why I'm doing this video to show you how to do it so you don't have to replace this so what we want to do is we actually want to pop these bearings out there's a bearing here and there's a seal and a bearing on the inside okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the seal from the inside so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the inside of it here and that's really pretty simple to do Okay, so this, this piece right here is actually the culprit. Now this is a new one, but I'm going to show you the, the method in which I used to get the old one out. Okay, so the method I used to get this, uh, the seal out is just a simple screwdriver, and this is pretty common. You stick this, the screwdriver in underneath the lip of the seal and you pop it out, and the seal will come out. Maybe not, not, obviously not as easy as this one, but you work your way around and you just pry the seal out. This is essentially garbage, so it doesn't matter if you damage this part. Okay, and, and also this is actually the part that caused the problem. This is just a, a rubber seal and this keeps the water from getting out of the main tank area into the bearing area. And this, the failure of this part, is the reason why we're doing this repair. Now you'll see underneath this that there's a bearing underneath here, roller bearing that goes inside of here. Uh, and there's two of those. There's, a, there's a, the inside bearing and then on the back side there is an outside bearing. And what we need to do is we actually need to remove the outside, we're going to remove this one first, okay? And in order to do that, we have to put some blocks of wood under it. So we're going to place some blocks of wood underneath the edge of it, just like this. I'm just demonstrating this here for you this way so you can see how the blocks of wood go. But essentially, we're going to place the blocks of wood on the ground like this with just enough space for that bearing to be able to pop out in between them. And then we're going to set this on top of there. And we are going to take an extension, the extension that we used to part the tank halves, something like this, you can use many different things, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this extension down through the center here at an angle and we're going to beat on this bearing all the way around like that and we're just going to beat on it, okay? And I'm telling you, you're going to have to beat on this thing really hard, okay, in order to pop it loose. Now the key is, is you want the bearing to come out straight, you don't want it to get cocked off to one side or the other, okay? So uh, just simply go around and, and pound on this and obviously I'm not, I'm doing it much more gently than what you will, but you're literally going to be, you know, swinging really hard to get this bearing out. Now once that bearing pops out, we're going to flip the tank over and you're going to lay it again on something solid. Now this bearing will not be here because that's the one that we just took out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take something like this. Now this is an inch and three-eighths socket with a half-inch extension. And this is going to slide down through this shaft area. It's going to meet contact with the next bearing. And you're just, I mean, you can take a sledgehammer, you can take a big hammer like this, whatever you want, and just give that thing a couple of wraps and that inside bearing will pop out. Okay, and, and basically uh, what I do from that, from that point is I would take a little bit of uh, uh, abrasive paper and... Uh, clean up the inside of it 
to make sure that the, uh, the bearing surfaces are clean. And then, and then what I would do is uh, use a little, little bit of lubricant and uh, spray it on the inside of there and clean that up and then set the bearings. You're essentially going to take the bearings, I'll show you one of the old ones here. And in order to get this in here, you just set the bearing where, it's, where it needs to go and you can use a block of wood or you can use a rubber type hammer like this and then you just pound the bearing in, okay? This type you can just pound just like this. And you pound it all the way in until it's flush, okay? And then you end up with that. So that's finished, ready to go, it's ready to be reassembled. And then uh, you're gonna do the same thing on the inside. Now, I've already set the inside bearing and it's, it's pounded in place and pressed in place and for that particular one, you're, you're again going to need to use an extension or something to get the bearing all the way down into, into place where it goes. Then we're going to install the seal and the seal is uses essentially exactly the same mechanism and I like to use just a little bit of silicone spray to make sure that the, the area is well lubricated and ready to accept the new seal and it's quite easy to assemble it. So we're just going to set a block on there, give it a couple of wraps, and our seal is in. It's really quite simple. You just want to make sure that it's set all the way and you're ready to go and now we can start reassembly. A couple things I want to point out as we're just wrapping up this video here. I've got the tank, I basically have laid the, uh, the back half of the tank down and I've, I've slid the, um, the inside of the tank in and you can see it spins real nicely. Um, it's all set in place. Those new bearings are working great. Uh, the other consideration that you want to have when you're reassembling yours is the main tank seal. And this main tank seal is located inside the back half here. And if you see, I'm, I'm sticking the screwdriver into it. This particular one, because I've had to repair this machine before, has already been replaced. So I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone on that. The gasket looks like it's in really good shape. It wasn't leaking. I had no problems with it when I took it off, so I'm going to go ahead and reuse that, and I don't think that it'll be a problem. The, the seal is only, uh, I think it's under $20, so it's not a big deal if you want to go ahead and get one. Um, that's the one other consideration. Another thing, as you're going through the reassembly, um, you'll want to take a look at your belt. And what's the, basically the way you analyze the belts is you flip them inside out and kind of make a loop out of them like that and just look at it and see if there's any cracks or if the belt's dried or anything like that. If it is, then you might want to consider replacing that too. And one other trick that I want to show you for getting these shocks off is, uh, is a, little socket, um, a little socket trick. So these shocks are what holds the main tank in. There's two of them on each side or one on each side and it's got a little tab on it here that you have to press in in order for this to push out. And so what I, what I do with that is I just take a half inch socket and I jam it on the end of it. And that does two things. One is, is it depresses that tab, but it also pushes uh, this piece out. And so it can be removed much easier. So um, just a little quick tip there for, uh, for removing that. And um, that's it. Should take you less than a couple hours to do this job. It's not too tough. Don't be intimidated. Just, it's just a matter of taking a few screws out, replacing a few parts, and hopefully this video was helpful. Okay, so that was quick and easy, right? Now I, sh I sh basically showed you how you can replace the bearings, replace the seal, uh, take the machine apart, put the machine back together. You can do this in less than, you know, maybe a couple hours if it's the first time doing something like this. Really simple. Hope this helps. The cool part is, is that I sourced the seals for you. They're super hard to find. You can't find them at any of the online stores or even local stores or anything like that. So I got a whole case of them, ordered them in. Uh, I don't think the manufacturer will even sell them individually, but so it's a special deal. You can order them right here. Just click on the link below. I can also send you the bearings if you want, or I'll just send you the numbers to get the bearings. The bearings are very common. You, any local bearing supplier that uh, you, you have in your area, you can get them from, or I can send them to you either way. And, um, and then, of course, there, there might be some other parts that you need that you want to consider that I've mentioned throughout the, the repair of this. So you can do it.